Welcome to week five. Can you believe that it has been five weeks of five FPU? Five weeks of FPU. You Man. guys made it to week five. That's right. That's Some right. of them started and was like, I ain't going to make it. <laughs> and look at you. I but see you in the chat right now. You made are- it. Here. So happy to be with y'all. What's yeah, going that's on? that's awesome. Um, if you don't know us, I'm Brittany Akinsella. I'm our Eagers pastor here at the church. Will Wilson Jr. I have the privilege of serving as the youth director at our University City campus. Yeah, yes. lots of fun. I you believe in the youth, you know. Is where it's at. That's where I'm at. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Youth is where it's at, groups is where it's at, and FPU. Yes, that's right. Is where it's at. Let us know right now in the chat where you're joining from. Um, we, you guys know what we do. Whenever we come together every week, right. we love to invest into you. That's right. We love to give away some fun things, invest into your FPU journey. So um, let's see here. I want to know who's been here all five weeks so far. So let me know in the chat um, if you have been here every single week so far. Somebody's here from Jefferson, Wisconsin, which I didn't know was a place. Jefferson, it's just Wisconsin. just a good, good city um, named Shannon. I see Red Rider is in Michigan, okay. and we are actually at our tour stop for Elevation Nights tomorrow in Michigan. Tomorrow Michigan. In Grand Rapids. Right. I'll be there. So maybe I'll see you there, Red Rider. Um, who else we have? We have Texas in the house. Washington, D.C. Uh-huh. I'm always Michelle at D.C. It's Memphis, the Tennessee. Ooh, Trinidad and Tobago. Ooh. Hmm. What's the weather like out there right now, Penelope? Probably really beautiful. Canada's here. A lot of people from Florida. Delaware. Okay. People joining from all over. Wow. Um, Okay. Right here. Karen McKenzie or McKenzie. You, yes, girl, all five weeks. Yes, Karen, we're going to send you a gift. Um, you know the deal because you've been here, but go ahead, email us at egroups at elevationchurch.org. We're going to send you something. Thank you for being here. And you too, Crystal. Crystal, we're going to send you something too. You email us too. Crystal, gay, gay gum, gay gum, something. I'm so sorry. Y'all, they, they know at this point I'm so bad point. with names, but you get a prize too. Awesome. Five Christina, weeks. Christina Wilson, we're going to send you some stuff as well. Make sure you send that that email. The email is egroups. Egroups at elevationchurch. At elevationchurch.org. Dot org. I can't remember that email. It's so know. easy. I, I know, but I. I it, it's fine. That's what we're know, here for. That's to help we're mine. <laughs> Lori, um, Lori, is that Lori Wilson by chance? Um, Lori, I bet it is because she's in Chicago. Lori email us. I'm going to send you something. I love you and I miss you a lot. Lori's amazing. Yeah? Yeah. And so I love that you're here, Lori. That's fantastic. Okay. okay. So you Chelsea guys are Deeds here. Is, oh, never mind. That's yeah. people. Oh, <laughs> we love Chelsea Deeds. She's amazing. Um, okay. You guys picked an awesome week That's to right. be here because if you were here last week, which it looks like a lot of you guys were. We talked about building wealth and we had some incredible coaches here. Now, we did give a spoiler alert in the email. So they already know that we have some coaches back. That is true. Um, And we're going to have like a round two of coaching tonight. Okay. So why don't you guys in the chat help us welcome some FPU coaches. Um, They're going to pop up here on the screen. Um, And today we have Lisa and Les. Hey, guys. Welcome back, Lisa. Les is joining us for the first time. Um, I know that um, last week was so much fun. We had to have you back. You helped us so much. You're going to help us even more today. Um, I was hoping, though, that you could take a moment and just reintroduce yourself, Lisa, and Les, let us learn a little bit about you and who we're going to be learning from tonight. Yeah, and thank you, y'all. It has been so fun just being in the setup with you tonight. You guys got the real deal going on here. (laughs) And uh, it's so fun to hear people from uh, all over the world. But my name is Lisa Barber, and I have been coaching for, it seems like a lifetime now. I've been with the Ramsey Solutions for about 20 years. And um, I think hopefully by the end of the night, you will know me just because you know my passion. Mm-hmm. And um, it is all about you guys. And um, that is the best part of being a coach is that it is service facing. It's all mm-hmm. about the person we're talking to, the person we're facing with and interacting with. And so I am so excited to be here again with you guys tonight. You brought it last week. Let's bring it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. So I'm Les Nino, and I'm also honored to be here. Uh, I know that it's a little bit of a down drop from Jackie, uh, <laughs> but uh, she, she's she's got a, a little prettier face to her. But, you know, I'm just really happy to be here. Um, 
Lisa and I have been working together for almost 18 years now. Wow. Uh, she's got me by a couple years, but uh, we've just enjoyed hanging out and sometimes challenging each other and using each other and leaning on each other. And it's been a, a real adventure and, and fun to be with her. Uh, just a little background. I originally got, well, I, I, I originally, we're all in Tennessee now, but I originated in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is just east of that Jefferson city you're oh, talking wow, about. Wow. Mm. So on Wisconsin. Um, and so uh, I started, I got trained by a man named Larry Burkett uh, 29 years ago. And, uh, and I met Dave 28 years ago. Uh, Dave was just getting started uh, with FPU, and I had the pleasure of helping him. Uh, it was a live format for three years before he ever did video. Uh, in late 96, he put it on video for the first time. And so uh, I have a rich history of FPU. I, I, I can't believe it's a bigger believer in FPU. Uh, I had the privilege of literally teaching the lessons live at a community state college before we did videotape it. I absolutely believe in it. And I'm just so proud of everyone that's on this call and everyone going through this mm -hmm. uh, because it'll be a life changer for you. And so I'm just honored like Lisa to be part of your uh, journey through FPU. Oh, we love it. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, seriously. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in. I want, um, if you are joining us right now, what questions do you have? Put them in the chat right now. Like they're here. We have them for tonight's session. So go ahead. We can't promise we're going to get to every question, but we want to hear from as many as you as we can. We want to answer as many questions as we can. But here's one thing. If you have been a part of Elevation for any amount of time, you may have heard the phrase personal it's powerful. Powerful, that's right. And so what we wanna do tonight is to kick us off and to kind of guide us on this journey is we wanna actually have a live coaching session. We told you guys last week, if you write in, if you let us know, we wanna hear from you. Who needs some help? Who wants some of like what they have to offer? Right. And so we have a couple that's actually here with us in person and they're gonna get live coached. You will too. So again, keep dropping your questions in the chat, but we're gonna kick off with them and use them kind of, let's call them, um, I don't know, well, our guide for the night. Guide. Yeah, so okay. they're gonna kick us off. Lisa and Les are gonna start coaching them. So I wanna go ahead and introduce you guys to our couple for the night. What's up, Caleb and Brittany? Hey guys. Up, Welcome guys? them in the chat. Wow, wow, wow. They're amazing. What's up, everybody? Um, first of all, I just wanna say thank you for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it can be kind of like scary to come on here and be vulnerable sure. and to share yeah. this with everyone, but you just kind of represent like the reason why we're even doing this. Yeah. And that's absolutely. to have a community. Right. and to have a group of people, we can be vulnerable together. We can learn from each other. We can figure out what the word of God says about what we're walking mm -hmm. through. We can hear from expert coaches that can really help us. They've been through this. They know like the best, they, this is their full-time job. Our full-time right. job is not learning this. This is That's what right. they do. Yeah. And so we're gonna learn from them tonight. And so I just appreciate you guys being here yeah. and being vulnerable and kicking us off. So if you just wanna quickly introduce yourselves and then um, I'm gonna actually let them take it away in a few minutes, but go ahead, introduce yourselves. Sure. You first, ladies uh, first. My name is Brittany, and um, this is my husband Caleb, and we've been married for almost 12 years this year. Wow, that wow, gets wow, an wow. applause. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That yes, yeah, three beautiful children, and we struggle with money. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're here. That's great. That's, yeah. yeah. That's it, that's me. Uh, yeah. See, I love Caleb. Caleb's gonna be like the typical guy that's like, yeah, she's hey, got it. It's actually me. a smart thing to do. <laughs> hey, but I mean. If I had to guess, then you know. We um, create the will here. It's, it's we learned, what is it, Lisa and Les? The, um, the one that's more outgoing. Um, the, oh, the free spirit? Yes, yes, the free spirit. Free spirit I'm just gonna right. guess. I'm gonna guess, Caleb, that you're the free spirit. But anyways, um, why don't you go ahead um, and just kind of introduce your situation a little bit to the coaches, like just to kind of get us started. Like, where are you guys at in your financial situation? They're probably gonna ask you questions. I'm gonna let them do their thing, but go ahead, right. introduce your financial situation and then they're gonna take it away. Sure, so so Brittany and I, out of college, we graduated, had uh, student loan debt, mm -hmm. uh, probably about 65. Somewhere between 60 and 70, yeah. $70,000 right right. of, of student loan Together. debt. And it's pretty much the only way we could have made it through college. And right. that was the thing we, we thought we, you know, you got to get student loan debt and, and uh, make it through college and sure. do all that stuff. So, so we started out marriage that way. And it wasn't until a couple of years into marriage that we heard about financial peace. And, um, and actually when we got here to, to Elevation and was able to start leading e-groups, that was the first time we really like dove into it sure. and started like t learning it and then eventually led a, a, an e-group and uh, we were so amazed by 
um, the process and it was just so eye-opening of like oh I can actually take control of my money I can actually mm -hmm. do stuff um, that's that's beneficial and not just feel like I don't have a clue where my money is just you know growing legs and, and running away sure um, so uh, for for us um, it's been uh, since we've been married for almost 12 years it's just been uh, you know a little over a decade of trying to figure out like how how do we actually you know do this thing how do we have a family you know three kids sure. mm -hmm. and a dog yeah. <laughs> just throw that in there you know <laughs> yeah. how, how, how do you how do you get out of debt like it's all all the questions that sure. I, I feel like most people uh you know that struggle with debt uh would ask and like car payments sure. and things like that it's yeah. just it feels like it's really typical. So, like, it's a it's an honor for us to be here tonight because I know that, I mean, we're we're here to receive you know feedback and help. But if anything that we ask or say can help somebody else, mm -hmm. like that's going to be so absolutely so yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, love it. Well, that's fantastic, vulnerability right there. Thank you for sharing, and we'll. We'll dive a little bit deeper, but um, the first thing I want to say is, is uh, I love Brittany that you uh, were trying to figure out what do we call them, and 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 you labeled a guide. Um, I actually want to say what we want to do is make you the hero. Mm. We, we'll 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 play that guide role, but you get to be the hero of your story. Everybody oh, listen that. tonight on chat. That's who you are. That's great. Wow. Um, you're the only one that can do this. You yeah. have made a commitment. You've decided to do something different. You know that there will be a net result that is different than yeah. what you've gotten yeah. before. Sure. That makes you the hero That's of fantastic. your story. You're the only one brave awesome. enough, courageous enough, and bold enough Love to it. step in. All right. Great. So yeah. that's what Les and I want to do for you, with you tonight, not for yeah. you, but with you tonight is position you as the hero of your story. Um, and the thing is, is with Financial Peace University, once you begin your journey, once you begin your story, it never ends. Right. You know, you're, you're going to have this debt payoff story and then you're going to have the send the kids to college story. You're going to have the pay off the house story. You're right. going to have the retire at age 40 story. You're going to come on. <laughs> whatever I receive it. I receive it. <laughs> whatever those hopes and dreams are that this FPU journey has just begun. That's so great. that's. That's the beauty of this. It's as living as the word it's founded on. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. great. That's great. I mean, let me verify what Lisa said is correct. Because mm. my wife and I have been doing this for three decades now. Mm. This right here, <laughs> it's called a food envelope. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually has cash in it. <laughs> and so somewhere in there. Um, but <laughs> but my wife and I literally use these envelopes. They're FPU food envelopes. Yeah. And we use them. Every time we get paid, we separate it out and she gets her half, I get my half yeah. and we, we split the duties. But that's what Lisa means. Just because I taught FPU 28 years ago, right. I still have a food envelope today. Wow. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow. It's, it's a con you, you, can, you never outgrow it, yeah. right? So let's, um, let's, I'm going to just set the expectations with, with, um, Caleb and Brittany. Uh, and it's as simple as this. We ask lots of questions. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we, again, will ask the question and you tell us what you need to tell us in that moment. Sure. Um, sure. and we want both of you to interact. Definitely. We have the free spirit and those that are the nerd one, typically a little more introvert, the other, a little more extrovert, but I want to make sure that we pause and, and consider both responses. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the first question I have for you guys is, um, you're launching an FPU. You're doing some things. And, and we'll find out a little bit more about what you are doing in just a moment. We'll go a little deeper where you are to where you want to be. That's the literal translation of a coach mm. termed in the 1500s, yeah. like a stagecoach. Yeah. We help you get from a point A to point B. But I do want to start with your destination. We wouldn't go to the train station or an airport or any other, an Uber app without telling them first where we want to go. That is fantastic. Mm. So, so where do you want to go? Where do you see yourselves in a few years down the road? Maybe maybe three to five years. We can go much further, sure. But I, I would say three years, five years. What do you see happening for yourselves? Not just financially, but what you want for your family. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, for sure, one of my biggest goals is to buy a home. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we would love to just have space for our kids and a yard for them to run around in and just have room to play and grow and feel settled. Because um, we've moved a lot in the past few years. And so yeah. just, just having a place to like set down roots and having them feel like they have um, just some consistency. And, mm. and I think that's one of our biggest family goals, no matter how many years it is down the road. Like we just want to have a, a home, not not a house or whatever we want to, we want to feel like we've set down roots and just build a life around our, for our children, just to feel like they've, they've got consistency in their life. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's where I am. I agree. I agree. I, I think mm -hmm. just for, for myself personally, I've, I, I, I've always wanted to be at a place where, um, I love the last step of, of, um, uh, of financial peace and being mm -hmm. well, like, just crazy generous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's always something, I think I grew up not thinking that that would ever be sure. possible. Sure. Yeah. Whether it's just a mindset that I adopted from the way that I grew up, because there were plenty of times growing up where it was just like, you just get by right. with mm -hmm. what you have. And, right. yeah. and it taught me resiliency sure. and loved all Absolutely. the lessons mm -hmm. that, that it taught me. But I, I think the thing that I want, the destination I want to arrive at is being able to pass the legacy of generosity to my children mm. and be able to steward that yes. relationship very well. And you know, it's, it, uh, you can be generous with, without money, yeah. I, I think or generous mm -hmm. with little money. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I would love to be able to show my children what it's like to be generous with, with money too. So, <laughs> <That's great. laughs> if I'm gonna be honest. That's great. That's right. Brittany and Caleb, did you, just, did you just describe your why? When you first wanted to get involved in FPU and you, you, maybe you didn't feel good about your financial direction, mm. did you just describe your why? Was that the motive behind you even wanting to do FPU? I mean, you kind of hit it on the head. I kind of, I, I, if, I, if I remember from the first time we filled out the book and it said to fill out your why, mm -hmm. like, I, th I think it, it in in little ways it sh it shifted, but the core is still the same. Of like, I just want to be able to not feel restricted. You know, sure. borrower servant to the lender. I don't, yeah. I don't want that for my children. Um, you know, I, I don't want that for ourselves. I want to be able to in, enjoy. Um, the things that God has given to us and be able to steward it well. So um, be able to teach my children like, no, you don't, don't, you don't approach money like this. Sure. You, mm -hmm. you can approach yes. it like this because th money's just a tool yeah. mm -hmm. and, and we can learn how to use it, be educated on how sure. to use it. So um, that's another reason we're super grateful to be here tonight. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, so your why is is powerful. That's what Les <clears throat> just pointed out, of course. Um, and the, it, the the teaching you're talking about, the example you're setting for your children is much deeper than um, um, generosity. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's actually combating fear, right? Right. Yeah. You, you know, you're you're teaching them how not to be afraid right. with little That's or great. much. Great. It makes no difference. Yeah. And, um, you know, boldly stepping into spaces, not not addressing money and uh, the fear of money and not allowing the enemy, even at I don't know exactly what ages your children are, but right now teaching them even how to combat the enemy when we know the number one enemy right. to marriage is money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so look at the foundation you're already building. So the the thing I want to challenge you to is that why that information that you began to process and now through the heart, you're making steps because this is this is heartfelt now. Yeah. I mean, Brittany, you painted an image to me playing on the swing set in the backyard. Yep, yep. You know, or, or digging out a patch of grass and <laughs> filling it with mud. That was you very know, yeah. it really was. And playing out there with those kids. And I, so I want less than I now what we want is what you want. Yeah. Um, wow. So you got a team. You got a team. Um, and so we're going to dig into a little more information, mm -hmm. but I think it's really important. You remind yourself of that why, maybe even go back and revise that. Mm -hmm. And everybody listening in the chat right now, do the same thing. Absolutely. The same question you already asked Absolutely. of Brittany and of Caleb. Y'all, please ask yourselves these same questions. What do I want? What is mm -hmm. it going to look like? Mm -hmm. What's it going to take? me you said mm -hmm. resilience it's going to take determination and grit yeah. and what you just decide is 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 really it you're going to stay the course so mm -hmm. let's let's get into some of yeah. this then let's yeah i i want to i want to encourage them really quickly first mm -hmm. 
because uh, when you started, Caleb, you described yourself and it almost sounded like you were picking on yourself. And maybe that was justified because because maybe you created a mess, right? But you know that you're normal. Yeah. Did you know that? <laughs> oh, for sure. Stop and, it. And Stop so, being normal. <laughs> and so, yeah, our, our, goal, our goal, if we have any goal for you whatsoever, is for you to be really weird. Okay, I'm just going <laughs> to say. Right. And not be normal anymore. Because normal is broke and we right. don't want you broke. <laughs> right. And so we just we, we just hope that we create a help uh, create a uh, atmosphere of a bunch of weird people from this FBU. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's great. There we that go. Is, love that. That is amazing. <laughs> that's great. Um, I will uh, say what they just said. I do want you guys to take it seriously because this can be just as much of a live coaching for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So make sure that you are putting your why in the chat. Like, where do you see yourself? The question was in three to five years. Put it in the chat and also just know that like we have teams of people that yeah. go through and pray over what you're putting in the chat. Yes. I want to be praying with you through the week. Will wants to be praying. Our Absolutely. teams want to be praying with you. So mm -hmm. make sure that you're dropping that in the chat and interacting with this because this is just as much for you as it is for Caleb and Brittany. And it doesn't matter what stage of life you're in. I saw Carol O'Brien put a comment in the chat uh, saying her age and her husband's age and and his condition with Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. First of all, I want you to know we're praying for you yeah, and your family for absolutely. healing, and we believe yeah. that healing in Jesus' name. But then she asked an important question. Is it even possible to start and to make it work at mm. that age? Wow. And the answer is yes. Wow. The yeah. answer is yes. So whether you're 56, 26, 25, I see uh, there's a 25-year-old police officer in the yeah. chat. No matter where you are, no matter where you find yourself, it is not too late for you to That's begin right. to start this journey and for you to take figure out what your why is mm -hmm. yeah. and to start at that point. And, and you right. really do get to benefit from this live coaching session that's, right. that's taking place right now. That is normally would cost you some money, but today is my favorite price. <laughs> Free 99. Free 99. <laughs> hey. That's my favorite price to pay for anything. Will they do, will they do have to qualify? Yeah. Mm. Especially if they're older, you know what they have to do to be able to do this well? Mm. They have to be able to breathe air. Mm. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's it. Okay. Yeah. As long as they're breathing air, that means they're still alive. That mm -hmm. means they can still make a difference financially. Come on. That's great. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> now that's going to start preaching. Now, Carol, it's, it's uh, you know, that answer. We get that question a lot, you all, no matter what the age. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the enemy trying to disqualify you. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I have a promise of tomorrow, but if I'm going to step into something, I'm going to do it well. I want to do it with obedience and God will bless that. Even that's if right. I just have one day left on this earth. So that's Carol, right. you got this. That's All great. right. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Les, where would you want to start with Brittany and Well, Kayla? I would like to know. Mm -hmm. I had the question, and then you kind of alluded to it, and oh, I'd like to sorry. follow up. I stole no, the no, thunder. No, well, <laughs> Lisa, you're trying to stir up revival today. I feel it. <laughs> I, see, this is what happens when you work together for 18 years. Yeah. And so I would like to ask, how old are your children? Uh, children are 10, 8, and 5. Okay. So you already need a pretty big uh, swing set. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've, I've built a few of those in my day, so God bless you. Um, okay. So what is, uh, you, you have a lot of things as far as your goals and your dreams and some of the things you talked about and shared. Uh, what is the one thing that comes to mind when uh, Lisa asked you, what do you want? What's the first thing on that list when you think, what do you want? I know what she's laughing. <laughs> it's a house. I, it's a house it is for so, sure. I, I know that's so seems so short term. I'm just, it's just on the forefront. It's there, like yeah. a home, a home, a home. We've so. just we've just been renting for a couple of years now, and yeah. it's uh. Just, so yeah. so uh, I think it would just be it would it would feel really nice to to own your own home. So yeah. Yeah. What about what about more immediate, like day to day? Even more immediate. Uh, I know a That's big a thing, question. a big conversation we've had over all of our years um, is just like more Nikes. <laughs> just, no, be, I'm just, kidding. just being able to say yes sometimes to our kids. Yeah. Like whether it's okay, stopping yeah. for ice cream on the wow. way home mm, or taking yeah. them for a day to the beach, you know, wow, like wow, since wow. we live like three hours away. Like yeah. we've had Phenomenal to say no so many times. Yeah. And it just feels like sometimes we just want to say yes. And it it's, it's big things, small things, right. in between things. Like Yeah, like what today, yeah. this afternoon before we drove over, we were we were thinking, do we need to get 
season passes to Carowinds or just no, because we got it last year. And so it was kind of like a thing that the kids were sure. expecting. So I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't think maybe should we. It's like House on the Rain. It's like, no, everything is yeah. no, because we have to save for, yeah. you know. So that's. What's, what's keeping you from saying yes? I guess just a, a budget, trying trying to hold to a, a, right. a pretty strict budget of paying. We have, you know, just, we don't have a lot of debt, but we're just paying off Still student loans. And then yeah. we have student loans and a car payment. And that is, that is our indebtedness, you know. Right. So just just feeling like we we want so many big things down the road that we are scared to, you know, nickel and dime right. ourselves to not having those things in the future. Mm -hmm. That is how that feels. Mm. Yeah. Did you have another thought? Cause, um, go ahead. Yeah. So <laughs> um, the when um, we have debt, and of course, I just want to get, if, if you don't mind sharing sure. those balances, uh, student loan and car. Yeah, so it, it started out when we got married uh, at closer to 70000 and now our student loan debt is around sixteen, fifteen thousand. Um, and then oh, the, wow. and then All the right. car. Yeah. Wow. So wow. so yeah. So over the course of, you know, the the uh, a little over a decade. I mean, we've been chipping away at it slowly but surely. But um, and then the the car payment right now. We we the car was fifteen. He was very I think Dave Ramsey against car payments. <laughs> I, I was, was <laughs> I was kicking and screaming the whole time. I was like, Dave would not approve. So yeah, anyway. And we bought about a, a last year our. Um, vehicle died that was big enough to hold all all five of us so um mm -hmm. we had to figure out something and we we ended up going for an suv and about another sixteen thousand. so that kind of went all the way down and then doubled our debt back so yep. okay. like from 16 right. now to like probably 32 or 30 somewhere around there yeah. Yeah. 16 to 16. all right that gives me some good perspective too um how's the budget working for you right now how y'all? How y'all feel about the budget? Do you are you still trying to wrap your hands around it? You feel like there's more you could affect, or what? I mean, I, I personally, I, I I kind of uh, maintain the uh, contrary to popular belief. I am the nerd, um, so <laughs> I I am extroverted, but I am the nerd. He's I am the one that is like I I love the numbers. I crunch them daily. Um, as far as like sticking to our budget or if something goes over, learn, like reallocating funds, like we're we're pretty good at doing that. I, I just think that uh, if we if we've tried to figure out ways um, to to cut out extra things sure. and then there's only so much you can cut sure. out. Mm. And so our our mindset has been like, is there anything side hustle? You know what? Sure. What is something that we could do to to continue to make more money, um, bring more income in? Sure. Now, now we have two incomes, mm -hmm. which is which is phenomenal. But then, um, like uh, adding our kids to our insurance, need braces, needing braces, <laughs> and like glasses and all, all the things. There's just life uh, things. And then I'm like, oh well, I actually am making a little bit less now. That we added the kids to the insurance, sure. mm. so just trying to figure out where's where's the money? Can where where can we find the yeah. sure. the money? You know, to be able yeah. to knock it out. That's you know that's why we suggest selling one of them so you can pay for that's the other great. two. Right? <laughs> so, I thought that you know. <laughs> Actually, what I would do is give them the worst child away, give right. the worst one away, right. and make your money. Yes. All right. That's what we do with ours. That's great. Um, so. I'm, I'm not hearing this. I used to be at children's house. Uh, <laughs> so, first of all, just having some fun. Did you hear what happened? I want y'all. You'll. I, I, I believe you're recording this. Is am I correct mm -hmm. about that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Go back and listen to yourself, number one. Man, it got stressful really quick. And you guys are fun. <laughs> you know, fun couple. Josh mm -hmm. Britt, one of our team leads, he just, he texted in right before we got started. And he said, this couple is fun. <laughs> Great. And, but the stress of the money became really weighty really fast. Because it, yeah. what it's doing is causing you to, um, first of all, you were using words like can't. I can't, mm. we can't say yes, we can't sure. do these instead of say, <laughs> saying we choose to or choose not to do these mm -hmm. things. Right. And there's a big difference in that kind of language and stress usually yes. brings True. in the can'ts, but. That's 
true. Great. Okay. It's a great. Point. Um, so my first challenge to you, even in the coaching session, right, is figure out what makes money fun. Talking about fun, mm. is it is it uh, the aspiration of the dreams that you have? Mm. It, you know, asking yourself if we sacrifice for a year, what will that look like? Or okay. if we're motivated to get that side gig or that side hustle and create some income, does that mean that we put a kid's envelope? in our budget yeah, that's great. Right. and mm-hmm. when they that's want to right. stop and get an ice cream we can look in the budget and say you know what tonight we can yes yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. can say yes um it it you know we want that healthy maintained budget definitely and we want that strictness because we want to pay off that thirty six thousand dollars. you guys already have that part of your plan under control right. what you are looking for it sounds to me is sustainability mm. and control yeah. choices yeah. Is that fair to say? Sure. Sure. How how involved are the kids in the budget? As as in like the things that we're spending for are for them. Talking to them. Are they aware of what you're doing? Are they aware of the prices the whole family's making and the why behind it? We've definitely discussed it. Yeah. Along. I mean, without I don't. We don't want to put a lot of pressure or stress on them we but we have discussed like <laughs> well that's that's not in the budget you know can we can we go stop at mcdonald's yes. on the way home like that's not in the budget this month you know so we have talked about it they but, but do they know why it's not in the budget yeah we've we've discussed we've we talked to them about it i think we could do they probably... know what you want to achieve they didn't do they know about this house that you dream about right i was about to say we, we could probably do a better job of right. of painting that picture yes like yeah, we've talked about it but right it like painting beginning. a better picture for them of for sure because maybe this is the parent in me or the children's pastor in <laughs> me but i think they could feel more involved in it mm-hmm. if they understand the why behind the no right yes. yeah Excellent. or not now and i love what lisa said to have a budget like a like a, a play budget or some kind mm-hmm. of a That's maybe great. a fun envelope a kids envelope like she said and then you know what we have this for the entire month now how do you kids want to spend it mm. oh we want to get some ice cream well you realize if you get some ice cream today you may not be able to get any yeah. this weekend right. right yeah well let's wait till because we're going to be at that party anyway and you I mean, you get them involved in the decision mm-hmm. making, but they understand it's more than just mom or dad being mean and saying yes. no. Right. It's mom and dad are on the same team with us. They want the best for us. And we're all sacrificing together because we want this, whatever it is, mm-hmm. right? Love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. And they're at different stages in life. The way you say yes to them will be different. Mm-hmm. And that 10 year old will probably understand if what Les is talking about. And they mm-hmm. might even go further. You know what? We can't, uh, if, if we want to stretch this ice cream money out through the month, so we, mom and dad can say yes more often. Yeah. Um, maybe we just go get some popsicles from the store. Right. It's yeah. good. And That's spend three dollars really rather than thirteen. Right. They're and, to make the you know, so you have an opportunity to leave that legacy of generosity mm-hmm. and giving by starting with helping those children yeah. understand mom and dad's budget process, the mind behind it, the why behind it, mm-hmm. and the saving behind it. Because you're trying to get yourself to that space of generosity, you're going to begin living leaving that legacy right now. Yeah, I love that. And you know, within reason. It's okay to just throw your whole plan away for that moment <laughs> and say, kids, we're going to celebrate because we've been doing so well as a family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's just go do it. Yeah. And it's okay. That's called balance, right? Right. You can't always say no, and I'm sure you don't, but I mean, let them know we're so proud of you. Mm-hmm. You have not been nagging us. You have not been begging. You know, you've been so good, your temperament and your spirit about this. You know, we just want, I think we should all reward ourselves yeah. and just forget the budget and let's just go do this. Let's yes. treat ourselves. And that's that. not the end of the world. I, yeah, as long I, as you're not talking a $10,000 Disney trip. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it's so good yeah. to hear you say that, to, for, for me to hear somebody yeah. Uh, of your your position to say that just frees me up mm-hmm. a lot of, of the I guess the guilt or the the weight of yeah. making those decisions because I'm like man if I do this it's great we're we're blessing our whole family but we're putting this we're delaying this you mm-hmm. know and so I always have that in the back of my mind but sure. hearing that no 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 that's that's balance sure. and you need that sometimes so you just need to say that, yeah remind yourself that this is a marathon. 
Yeah. Sure. And That's sometimes great. you tend to Good. treat it like it's Good a sprint. Work. Right. But remind yourself that it's a marathon. Guess what? <laughs> we probably, a lot of people listening to this have done marathons or at least half marathons. At least I have done a few halves. Yeah. Uh, we've limped never through again. a few halves. <laughs> but even on the never again. what happens? People take a rest and get some drink, get some water, get some Gatorade. They have it on the side of the road, you know, and yeah, you've got to sure. take a little break. Yeah. yeah. And I'm done. suggesting breaks on your marathon. That's great. I've done zero half marathons. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Will and I are like, no, we're no, not here with that. Sounds like no. a great analogy. I have yeah. no idea what you're it talking about. It sounds awesome, though. You guys keep doing keep that. Keep going. You keep going. Um, place before you. We saved up the last two years for a Disney trip, but I just heard you in the spirit tell my, go me home and tell my kids to cancel it. And, um, so we can, get, uh, we can get that money back. Thank you so hilarious. much, Liz. Okay, on a serious Hello. note, though, I do have a question for you from the chat. Um, and it seems like it kind of goes in the flow because we're kind of talking about reward versus like sure. hard work and discipline mm -hmm. and like where does this fall? And Mika Bryan asks, um, I'm fighting to pay these school loans off, but how can you maintain the gazelle passion through the hard times, especially when sacrificing so much mm -hmm. and working a ton of overtime and says, I'm fearful of burnout. Wow. Yeah. Like, so yeah. what, what would you give to like, what advice would you give to that? Yeah, that is that is a real fear. You know, like the stove is hot. Don't touch it. Not that big blue monster behind the bed. You're very wise to say, I want to be able to stay this course. I want to be able to create the the uh, same intensity at mile 13 as I do, you know, mile one. Yes. And to, to come out of the gate, you're absolutely right. You know, when my husband and I, when we got out of debt, we had $280,000 in medical debt to pay. Now, that's a whole story behind it, and it's silly and stupid, and we made really bad choices. But um, we didn't want to position ourselves in bankruptcy because the people that we owed money to saved my husband's life. Mm. And um, and has multiple times since. So we had a real passion to pay this debt. And... Um, we budgeted a few extra bucks every pay period so that every couple of months we could maybe go take a weekend away. And um, my, my, my mom came down, we have four children and I, we needed to all survive this. And um, the stress would get really high, the creativity would get low. We wouldn't want to work those extra jobs. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't want to work that over time. We wouldn't want to, you know, I, I didn't want to go to work and wait tables on Saturday and Sunday when I worked all week long, you know? Um, and so we, we put that money aside. And I want you to know we would use that most of the time. There were a couple of times we were so close to paying off the debt, a, a small debt that we used the money instead for that and we were satisfied, we were content. See, what was happening is that we had a plan mm. and we gave ourselves choices. You know, when you say yes or no, if there's guilt associated, like with what Caleb said, we're probably gonna make a what we feel is the wrong choice. Sure. It, it may be the right choice, that we're gonna feel it because we're controlled by that, that guilt and that, that stress and that mm. overwhelm. Yeah. But here's the thing. It took us three and a half years to pay off $280,000. We spent maybe $3,500 on a weekend getaway or a nice dinner out mm -hmm. or whatever we needed to do. And we paid off $280,000. I think mm. that was a good return on investment. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, it, it, the thing is, is that when you take control of this and you're not, when you're saying can't, but can't, but can't, but all the time, you're reacting and responding to money instead of planning with it, mm -hmm. instead right. of creating the plan and, and being an adult about the choices that you make. Yeah, it becomes legalism mm -hmm. and we beat ourselves up mm -hmm. and that's just not any fun. You know, this right. whole planning and this budgeting can actually be fun. I remember when the kids were little, uh, I, I had the sense to think I didn't want them to feel like, well, daddy was never home. Right. Because mm -hmm. yeah. my wife was a homeschooling mom. And so she, you know, my, my overtime was really like our extra income. Sure. Okay. Whereas normally we'd have, you know, we had a lot of, you know, couples that we mm -hmm. knew that, you know, they both worked. So they had double income. We didn't have the double income. So my overtime was like our double income. That's great. But I started thinking I'm not home very often because I'm working sometimes double shifts. And that's not fun for the kids. So I set up kind of a, a, a pack between them. And so I said, okay, listen, so when daddy has an opportunity to work overtime, what I'm gonna do is call 
and I'm going to ask all of you as a family, including your mommy, I'm going to ask all of you if you think I should work the extra hours. Now, I kind of bargained with them. I said, what I will do is I will give each of you 1% of my overtime. Mm. <laughs> hey. And, and, those, and, and especially my daughter, who is the oldest, she did the math real quick and she said, work, dad, work. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what was really sweet? There were times where I called, even though they knew that, and they said, no, daddy, we'd rather be with you right now. It's more important than the Absolutely. Wow. So see the, see the balance that you have to have, mm -hmm. and you even have to have it a married couple. Uh, you, you, you've got to keep your sanity through this. Sure. And the person that asked the question in the chat, it just has to blend. You can't mm -hmm. abuse it either way, but at the same time, you can't make it legalistic either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to keep sanity through this and make sure that it's always at least a certain degree fun, right? So yeah, That's that right. fun be, be oh, come back up. You know, the stress, it, it really drives the stress out. Mm -hmm. You know, Caleb and, and Brittany, when you are thinking right now, you've got a good handle on your budget. Um, you know what your debt is. You know the snowball. You know the seven steps. You all can tell them. We could. We we don't. We don't have to say it. You all know it. You know what that is. And you came into this coaching session with that again with that underlying stress. Um, are we gonna uh, asking your questions? Are we ever gonna get what we want? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, we have what we need, but are we gonna get what we want? Mm -hmm. Are we gonna get the house? Are we gonna get the generous giving aspect of this? Are we gonna be able to do that? What do you think now? Um, I feel a lot of relief. I just feel, just hearing you guys talking, like it's a perspective shift for me with the kids and just that freedom to make it, you know, it's like when you have a little kid and you don't say don't run, you say walk. Like you give them the positive things to think about. So just shifting the mindset into a little yeah, bit more of a, a positive view and having them be more involved and have, making some small decisions. And um, I just really love that. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. And so with home ownership, um, have have you projected anything out? Have you thought about when would be the best time based on debt and all those kinds of things? Have you walked through that together and had that conversation? Slowly but surely. I, I don't think we're at a like a definitive point in it yet. No, we've, though. we've talked a lot. We just don't know like when Talk when we dream. when is the ability there like with with the debt is it smart to buy when you're still in debt we don't really have a whole lot of savings we've we have an emergency fund and we've um, just being transparent like a few times we just felt God impressed upon our hearts at certain years a few years ago to give our emergency fund away like so we've done that probably two times an hour thinking said nope <laughs> no more but um, but there's that's that's our savings right now it's just the emergency fund so we, we just don't we don't really know is if is it smart is it smart to do first-time home buyer, buyer programs where there's make, no money make, down and this is great too make, because make this is a um, this I'm so sorry Les but this question that she, like that they're kind of getting at when I tell you it's mm -hmm. one of the most asked questions mm -hmm. in the chat that people have and that they've been writing in about so anything that you guys can share about that honestly I think it would help a lot of us Absolutely. Yeah. just knowing the timing yeah timing about, of about. it yeah and, and and you can actually do this yourself by just understanding the principles of FPU so what do the baby steps tell you oh. if you think about home ownership when, when, when would that happen in the baby steps based on your knowledge of the baby steps. Oh, you may have to remind me. I get up to, <laughs> I get foggy around step five. Four, five. <laughs> I'm stuck on yeah. two. Why? I think that's part of the issue though, Les, is because like one of the things I love though is that you challenge everyone to dream. Right. But whenever you're still stuck in baby step one or two, I think why we'll see this question coming up a lot is because people don't even venture into it because they don't even know what's possible because they're so head down. But like the need to open what you've done is help lift perspective mm -hmm. and like help people see, Absolutely. oh wait, no, yeah. I know where I'm at, but I have to look forward and see where I should be in three mm -hmm. to five years. Right. And I think for a lot of us, like even tonight might've been the first time anyone's even done that, right. looked up to what mm -hmm. could be in three to five years and like, wait, I can't even just at least think about or explore what it looks like to buy a home. Right. Really? That, that's an excellent question. All out, Brittany, because um, that's why I asked them if they projected it out. Have they actually mm -hmm. thought through the numbers and things like that and when it could be? Mm -hmm. I mean, wouldn't it be exciting if you could actually, by numbers, say, 
I think we can have this house in four years. Or sure, we can have yeah. this house even in six years, but have a destination and a timeline mm -hmm, right. so that you can be very intentional on your purpose. Mm -hmm. And as you plan, again, get the kids involved and have that countdown. We only have three more years now. We only have two more years now. Mm -hmm. And the kids will be so doggone excited. And then when you want to go have ice cream, say, okay, do we want this ice cream or do we want to get into the house two days later? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Help us have fun with it on the projections sure. and, the, and, the, yeah. and the planning. Yeah. Because sacrificing today really does impact tomorrow. Right, right. right of course. So right. That's that end. You know, yeah. we don't sacrifice everything, but am I willing to wait a little longer for the house mm. to maybe take a little vacation two months from now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you might decide, no, it's not worth it. We want the house. Mm -hmm. But those are the decisions you can make when you have those things in front of you and you have the projections. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you were to say, here's our, um, uh, here's our absolutes, here's our defining statements. Um, we want, let, let's just say you decided, uh, everybody listening, you know, and you're in this, like you said, Brittany, this season, man, and that marathon and you are, you're just trudging on you're going at that house is out there right see for me my personality is that tell me when mm -hmm. and right. i'll work like a dog yes right. until i get there yeah. and so if i if i have that destination point is four years like Les mentioned yeah. then and i wanted to be debt free have my emergency fund and at least 10 percent down payment let's just say that we were there mentally what will it take for me to do over the next four years mm -hmm. to get there? Mm -hmm. So that's where we, that's where the disconnect comes mm -hmm. is that we have this, now we have this dream and, and we have some guidelines around it, but then we don't make the plan. It yeah. doesn't become the vision. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's, where, that's usually the missing link is the vision, how we connect the two. So what does that mean we're going to do? We're going to we, we're going to keep on this budget. We're going to make sure it's healthy. We're going to put some kid fund in there. We're going to we're going to do some things that keep us sustainable, mm -hmm. keeps this sustainable for us. Mm -hmm. So we got a good plan there. And then we take a look at, um, you know, any additional money that comes in, whether it's the side hustle or uh, the gig that you here. Here's one thing. I'm a sidebar right now. God will fund what he favors. Wow. Never forget that. Lisa, 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 we weren't ready for that. Oh, that's so good. Oh my good lord. lord, God will fund so, what He favors. Right. I need to see that in the chat gotta, twenty times. Gotta, good lord, I am un, I am unwell. <laughs> oh my lord, that's fantastic, <laughs> man. Thank you for favor that. me, like Lord. Favor me. <laughs> I'd like to compliment Caleb too. Because when he was accused of being a free spirit, he didn't deny it immediately. So that was very humbling. <laughs> he did. And then he came back, though, with like the one hitter quitter. Hey. Po like contrary did, to did popular contrary. belief. Hey. I'm just saying. He didn't have the need to do it immediately. So it's I amazing. actually give him some credit. Um, okay. <laughs> I so received that. Thank we you. are closing in on some time here. Sure. Um, but I do want to ask you guys one question. This comes up every week. It really has not much to do with this specific situation, but every single week we get a request of like, hey, I am a single person right. or a single parent. How does any of this, because we're talking to a married oh, couple, wow. yeah. how does this apply to me? I don't have two incomes. It's one income, yeah, it's, Yeah, I have one income trying to do all the things Multiple that you're kids. talking about yeah. with two. Yeah. So I just want to know like from That's you, great. how does any of, this translate to that type of situation, anything that we've been talking about tonight? Well, Lisa was a single mom, so I will pass it on to Lisa because she yeah. experienced it personally. Wow. Well, thanks, Les. I, yeah, I, uh, I was single for a lot of years for my, with my first two children before I remarried. And um, I was in that space of saving to buy a home. Um, I was scared to death of debt. And now I had had a little bit, but I was scared to death of debt. It was, that was a very driving motivator for me because I knew it represented risk in my life. Mm -hmm. And I already had enough, enough risk. Mm -hmm. One wow. income, two kids yeah. dependent on me, right? There was already enough risk in my life. Wow. All you singles out there, you're connecting that right now. Fear, risk, and let that be a motivator for you, definitely. 
Um, but here's the things that we talked with Brittany and Caleb about that translate into your life as well. It's it's the things that are founded on biblical principle. Yeah. That it, that that it excludes excludes no one. That's great. It's all inclusive, right? It excludes no one. We all have the opportunity to receive God's favor and His grace in these matters. He will give us the energy to sustain. One one thing that you want is a good accountability partner, somebody who's cheering mm-hmm. you on. Mm-hmm. You don't want somebody that points their finger at you mm-hmm. that says you didn't do this. That's not loving wow. accountability. Wow. Mm. You want good accountability pe- partners that say, you know what? What's going to take you from here to there? Yeah. And how do yeah. I help you? And th- it's the same thing. We want to look for our vision. We know these steps. I want you to look at a time frame in the future. Mm. What's that look like in three to five years from now? What do I want? What do I feel? What do I need? And it, it, singles, especially single parents, I mean, you are frazzled all the time and you need to rest. This is a good opportunity with Financial Peace University. Don't allow the phrase gazelle intensity to propel you by an urgency. That's not the same thing. Your gazelle intensity and urgencies usually drive us to make hasty decisions, especially alone. When we don't have that built-in accountability partner when you're laying your head down at the end of the day the other thing i want you to do singles is tell yourself well done wow good job Mm -hmm. make sure you're telling your don't ask what you're doing wrong Mm -hmm. tell yourself what you're doing right those are those would be my pointers my tips for anybody single Mm -hmm. especially those single parents yeah and and when you're finding that accountability partner they don't want to point their finger at you, but they do love you enough to be brutally honest with yeah. you. Mm-hmm. And so if they see you're going down the wrong path financially and you're going to hurt yourself long term, they've got to be uh, close enough to you and have enough security in your friendship that they can say, I don't think you want to keep doing that, do you? <laughs> Pointing them <laughs> you know? back to the future. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pointing them back to the future. That's right. And so, um, yeah, it should be somebody that loves you enough to be honest with you, too. Mm. And, and they're not there just to make you feel good. Um, that's what accountability is. Sometimes it doesn't feel good. Uh, as coaches, we say that we're truth tellers. And that's not always a popular position. Wow. Because sometimes you feel things that, you know, uh, Tom Landry, great coach for the Cowboys years ago, um, he was in the NFL for 36 years. He said that a a great coach really just tells you what you don't want to hear and gets you to see what you didn't want to (laughs) see. But that's coaching. That's the way you learn by hearing things you don't want to hear and by seeing things you didn't want to see. And so are you willing to be a truth teller? And maybe you know some singles that maybe you need to invest in them. And, and maybe be someone that can speak into their life. If they give you permission, you know, don't force yourself on anybody. Sure. <laughs> but if they give you permission, maybe be that person for somebody who's single. That's fantastic. I love that. Hey, thank you so much. Um, Josh Britt, who works at EPU. Love him. I know you guys work with him. He texted me. He's like, man, crazy idea. Maybe we should consider doing like a whole singles thing for single parents, single people. Um, and so I don't know. Maybe if we pray hard enough, coming. it might happen. <laughs> maybe it'll, maybe it'll happen. Um, I do think it's a great idea, though. Thank you guys for sharing that. Um, yes. And thank you for being here tonight. Yes, thank you. Seriously, thank like you very much. God has gifted you a wisdom that I feel like we can all glean from. Absolutely. And I know that like what you invested tonight was good soil. And yes. we all can't wait to go and put it to work. Thank you, Caleb and Brittany, absolutely for Thank sharing you. your story with us tonight. I know oh. it takes like a lot of vulnerability and it's very exposing. But I know for myself and my marriage and my family dynamic, and I think I speak for hundreds of us that are joined tonight and thousands that will benefit from this conversation. We all thank you. Absolutely. Um, and so thank you so much. And to everyone that's been here every week, thank you for being brave enough in yeah. your financial peace journey to help us learn from you sure. as well. And so, um, Will. We got one more week. We have one more week. Next week, we're going to be talking about the generosity part. Mm-hmm. So that part. It's going to get good next it's week. Gonna, it's going to get good next week. So if you've made it all five weeks, man, let's make sure you're here for next week. I wanted to, um, I just felt compelled as we were in the middle of this to start off, give us, give us a jump start into next week. And so when the woods get off this call, 
uh, my family's already uh, donated to y'all's kids' uh, ice cream fund. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you pick your phone up, you guys are the best. That is amazing. It's, it's a couple dollars for each one of them, but you don't got to. Y'all figure that That's out. That's amazing. That. Generosity. Generosity. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Praise we love God. you guys. I mean Thank it. Thank you. Oh, I mean and um, you know what? Can I have a last encouragement for Caleb and Brittany? Absolutely. One last encouragement on the giving, your emergency fund. Uh, make sure it's God. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, without doubt, make sure it's God, because you may have the gift of mercy. And one thing I've learned over the years in ministry is mercy without wisdom is one of the most dangerous right. things. Right. Wow. Absolutely. Mm. Wow. I agree with that. Wow, wow, wow. I agree with that. Wow. My goodness, Les, you and Lisa were <laughs> out wow, wow, here wow. preaching tonight, yes. and I am not mad at it. I'm Whoa. still unwell. Seriously, <laughs> thank you so much for everything that you've imparted into us. Yes, thank really, you. Really, we are so grateful. We are so appreciative. Um, Will, would you Our be willing to pray us out tonight? I would be willing to pray us out tonight. Um, I want you guys to know that we want to... Uh, want you to put any prayer requests that you might have mm -hmm. in our chat. We have some of the the best chat hosts on any platform <laughs> anywhere. I'm willing to say Amen. that. I'm willing to take a bold stand and say <laughs> Come that. On. Um, no, I mean that. And um, th that group of people does such a great job going through every time we go live, every yep. time, no matter what it's for, and looking through for your prayer requests and right. intentionally and specifically praying for you. So I'll pray for, for this night, but I want to make sure that you put your prayer yeah. requests in the chat so that you know that there's somebody praying for you, praying That's for right. your family, praying for the steps that you're, that you're wanting to That's take, right. and that you know that you're not out here by yourself, that you really do have you really do have an awesome family that's here with you. So let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for this time. Lord, thank you so much um, for for Dave Ramsey and his team and, yeah. and, and the resource that they have been to so many people. Yes, yeah. God. Lord, thank you for the folks who are here on this on this this experience today for the very first time. Yeah. But Lord, also thank you for the ones who've been here every single every single yes, week and Lord. haven't missed it. Lord, I just believe in, and, and I just feel compelled that there are people who are in the middle of the awkwardness mm. and the the weird feelings and tensions of taking some of these baby steps for the very first time in mm. their lives, in their 20s and in their 70s and everybody in between. And so, Lord, I'm praying that that they would get to experience the peace mm. that comes with financial peace, Lord. And we know that peace is not a feeling. It's not limited to an, a feeling or an emotion. We know that peace is a person. Yes. And so, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would comfort those who are taking steps, not not yeah. just for themselves, Lord, but for the single parents out there mm -hmm. who are kissing their babies goodnight and going into their room stressing and crying mm -hmm. every single night, trying to figure out how they're keeping lights on and how they're mm -hmm. going to put gas in the car. Lord, with the Holy Spirit, we're praying that the Holy Spirit will comfort them in a special way tonight, yes, God. Lord. Yes. And we're praying that that comfort will fuel them to continue taking these steps of faith as they're changing the trajectory of their legacy through these very simple steps, Lord, we thank you so much mm. that our responsibility is to do the practical thing mm -hmm. because we know when we can do the practical thing, you specialize in doing what that which is supernatural. Yes, yeah. God. And so, Lord, for every single baby step we take here in our finances, Lord, we're praying that you would work a miracle in our yes. faith, mm. that yes, you would God. continue to strengthen us and that families lives, people are continuously changed through this program. Lord, we love yes. you and we thank you and it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. 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 Well, we are a little bit wiser. That's we right. are prayed up. That's right. That's and right. so we will see you back here next week for our final week of the FPU experience. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. See y'all.